Hi, welcome back to Cloud Computing Journey. We are going to start with the Amazon Web Services. In this session, we are going to learn about what is Amazon Web Services. We would see the overview of Amazon Web Service products. What are the basic keywords for Amazon Services or its a global infrastructure? We would also touch upon the security, common security mechanism supported by Amazon Web Services. When you go to Amazon.com or Amazon.e, there are majorly three parts of the Amazon. As I would say there are numerous parts of this, but some of the most popular parts I would say, one is Amazon.com or Amazon.in, which is the biggest online service provider or retail service provider. Now in India also Amazon.in ranks in the number two and it's a catching up with the number one very fast. At the same time, there's a huge seller business there also. People can sell their things online on Amazon. If you are into any kind of a market, you are in a fashion, you are in a, some kind of a grocery, you are in some different kind of a things, Amazon has some opportunity for you. But the business, this business which is running since years is getting surpassed by the new upcoming business and now I won't say it's new it's now almost 10 years but that's taking over the Amazon.com or Amazon.in in terms of the revenue and the profit margin it is generating for Amazon that is Amazon Web Services it's Amazon's own IT infrastructure business services where it provides you IT services on demand IT infrastructure as a service model. Now I'm sure quite a few would think why the word called web services? Why are they using web services? And if you are a techie, you might know what the web service would be for you. And I would just like to share a story, though I read in one of the blogs, so I'm not 100% sure for the uh, accuracy, but what I heard from that blog is in early 2002, Amazon was still then type the leader of the market. It was the again largest online retail provider. The one challenge they were facing was they were not able to scale beyond certain limit. And I'm talking the year 2002. And in 2002, Jeff Bezos, who is the CEO of Amazon, he sat with his the top executives, including C CTO and all of the parts of the VP of engineering, everybody and they made a mandate that henceforth anything which is going to happen at Amazon would be on a web service compliant it should be loosely coupled it should be web service compliant and that's why it's no wonder when Amazon started its IT infrastructure service they named as a Amazon web services so we are going to from this onwards, all the sessions would be talking about the Amazon Web Services and its various offerings. And when I say offerings, you would be surprised to know Amazon offers more than 45 and I'm saying almost 50 plus services. You name the service what you need, Amazon would have in its database or in its uh, armor. You want something for the compute? It means you need a virtual server, it is available, you need the storage, it is available, you need the static store. it is available, you need for something for database, there is something, you need something for the analytics, you need for the automation, you need for the mobile application development, you need for the gaming, you need something for the administration and security, something available for the networking, you name the things, there is something available for you in the Amazon. In the later part of this video, you would also come across all the services of Amazon. Rather, I would say almost all because Amazon keeps adding the new services almost every month. Every year, they introduce between 5 to 10 new services. So, the way they are growing, I'm sure they would keep on adding more and more services. And now, a one question you would always have should I use Amazon and is there a, any real cost advantage for me if I tell you there is a one use case where you should close your eyes and go to Amazon 
that is scalable infrastructure requirement whenever there is a need for scale you have to go to Amazon only I'm citing an example suppose you are running a e-commerce platform now for this e-commerce platform you would not know when is your requirement is going to uh, rise suppose there is a sale going to come and that sale has generated a humongous curiosity among your buyers and suddenly your usage which is supposed to be around 100,000 regularly has crossed a million plus how would you handle this there are two possibilities one case would be either you go and procure the infrastructure from the beginning or whenever the demand rises you try to do something now think about if you have procured this infrastructure from the beginning it may happen that it would be useful to you it might not be the reason apart from that sale period 80 to 90 percent time this might be idle which is not useful for you then how would you deal in that case at the same time when you think over when the demand rises if you have not procured the infrastructure you are not going to meet your customer demand and you are likely to fail how do you balance between them because you don't want to do a lots of investment because 80 percent time it's idle at the same time you don't want to get your customer disappointed because of the performance the cloud is a handy tool for you if you see the red line at the bottom is the actual demand which shows that sometimes you might have a 5,000 users sometimes you might have a 50,000 users sometimes you might have a 20,000 users the demand keeps changing so during some sale period the demand might have risen during the non sale period the demand might have come down it would keep on happening if you are on Amazon what you can do here is suppose you need 10 servers to meet your regular workforce can you launch 12 servers that is a 20 percent extra for now we just go that way the yellow line which shows is the Amazon servers you can launch so when your demand says I need 10 server you would have launched 12 servers now suddenly the demand rises it reached to the 20 because the number of users coming would require you to scale up more so instead of 10 now you need 20 servers don't worry Amazon is with you you can scale up again by 20 percent so launch 24 machines for a requirement and these four machines are just for a buffer case because whatever happens there is always a buffer available to serve the traffic at the optimal way now again the demand decreases you come back to the suppose your load is much lower and you are now at the 8 server requirement so go for the 20% of 8 so around 2 more you would be running 10 servers after a few months or something when your site has picked up more and more and suddenly there is a requirement where for this big or huge sale you require 50 machines Amazon is there for you you can get additional 20 percent that's a 10 more so 60 machines available and running for you now you would I'm sure you would think how does this work in the Amazon so whenever I need I have to go and say that give me 10 more take 5 back how would that work and how does the pricing mechanism work remember Amazon is cloud offering and what are the five essential characteristics of the cloud work pay as you go model available on demand elastic by nature if you remember these three these are the ideal scenario here when the demand rises automatically using the on-demand availability it would add more resources 
Amazon Web Service has the services which can automatically scale up when your demand rises and automatically scales down when the demand decreases. You can configure that at what moment how many servers would be running and based on that it would be adding the servers, it would be removing the servers. What you get in the green line it you show is that's the tremendous opportunity for saving because you are paying only on a pay-as-you-go model. So sometimes during that sale period you have launched 10 additional servers for 3 days you are going to pay for those 10 additional servers for 3 days only not for the whole year. And during certain period you have removed 12 servers don't worry you are going you are saving more money because your load is low that's your opportunity of the cost and Amazon's elasticity and pay-as-you-go model the infrastructure usage gives you the tremendous opportunity for cost optimization cost saving and that is the reason I say if you have a scalable requirement close your eyes and go to the Amazon Amazon would be an ideal scenario for you in this case. Yeah, if you say I have a very static case and I don't have a dynamic or scalable requirement, again, you have to think what are the offerings from Amazon and would that be helpful for me? Because in the future, when the requirement arises, Amazon would be there for you. And when I'm talking about this, and even in the previous cloud computing session I talk about, why it's very important to use the Amazon or what is the growth of the Amazon or I spoke about it's a massively 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 scalable what did I refer over there this is the case given by Amazon itself Amazon says in 2004 they were seven billion dollar plus retail business they had more than 8,000 plus employees and this I am talking 12 years back there were a whole lot of servers in the Amazon.com. Whatever number of servers they had, similar kind of uh, servers they are adding to their data center every day. Yes, I'm talking about every day. They are capable to run a $7 billion plus retail business. Now that makes you or eyes open, isn't that? Every day, Amazon is ready to accommodate one seven billion dollar plus retail business kind of infrastructure. So that shows the its growth. That shows the virtually unlimited infrastructure resources available with Amazon. And now you would think about. So we were thinking about where if I have a static use case or I have other use case, would I use Amazon? Should I skip Amazon? What would I do? See, this is just a simple use case list of Amazon. Where can you use Amazon? There are numerous examples and if you go to the Amazon case studies or Amazon over there, you would find the hundreds and thousands of companies are using Amazon for the various purposes. Example, backup and archive. When you want to take the backup of your applications, Amazon is there. You want to set up the archive, it is there idle for the application hosting you would find the numerous applications the best example is a Netflix even Instagram it used to be on Amazon before Zynga it also used to be on the Amazon before application hosting is the perfect case then media sharing everybody is sharing their media over internet you have a static content you have the image files video files HTML, CSS, what kind of files you have? Do you want to share with your friends, families or everyone? Again, the same case, the Instagram, that is the perfect case. In India also, there are so many cases like Redbus is using, Paytm is using, NDTV is using and many more are using the Amazon Web Services. You want to distribute that media among them. So you are using this not only for storing, but you are doing this content distribution also. You can do much faster way using the Amazon's content delivery networks. Do you want to use for the academic computing? There are 
multiple universities in the USA which are using that when they are doing on a genetic research or some kind of a high computing requirement research which requires them a kind of a supercomputer a kind of a much powerful computers Amazon is a handy for them and why handy they don't need to procure anything whenever they want to taste something they want to run something performance they can run on Amazon and pay only for the hours they used it search engines perfect use case because it would be a scalable requirements social networking people are using this scalable applications no doubt about that if you want to host your SaaS and pass you want to make your own SaaS you want to make your own pass and host it over there Amazon is there for you so there are the multiple use cases you can think of where Amazon would be helpful for you now let's understand why the Amazon is getting more and more popular also Amazon as a unique concept and now I won't say Unix most of the people are following Amazon but the way the Amazon is showing growth that's what comes here they have the concept of the spreading across the globe Amazon is having number of data centers across the globe and you can use any of the data center based on your performance or pricing requirement when you talk about the Amazon, the Amazon geography has a two concepts. One is Amazon regions and another is the zones. This gives you an option to place instance in a multiple locations. And each location would have a compose of the availability zones and the regions. Now what is a region? A region is a geography remember the word geography where Amazon is having its data centers in each geography Amazon would have a one or more than one data centers and that data center is known as a availability zone I repeat myself region is a geography where Amazon is having its own data centers and each data center is known as an availability zone now why do you need the concept like the regions and the availability zones the important part is each availability zone that is the data center is separated from the other data center in the same region it would be a physically or virtually but they would have a separate kind of a power supply they might have a separate kind of a internet uh, connections they might have a separate kind of a uh, other services so advantage is even if one of the data center fails due to any of these reasons the other data center may not fail it would keep on running as normal so by launching your instance in the separate region what you get is you can design the application to be closer to the customer as well as you get advantage of the failure you can achieve high availability or disaster recovery option regions and zones are ideal for your high availability and disaster recovery options because suppose you take an example if you have launched an instance now what is an instance I'm going to come but you can think of it's a, like a virtual server a virtual server you have launched in a zone 1 of US East region that's in the North Virginia of the USA now you can also launch one more instance and in the second availability zone US East 2 in the same region advantage is if due to any reason one of the zone fails something happened right the, this is the possibility in this computer world anything can fail if that happened then your second server is still running and serving your request so you can achieve high availability and disaster recovery with the regions and the zone concept currently Amazon is having 12 regions across the globe it is having 32 availability zones and out of this 12 
one more region is coming soon to India in 2016 they said in, by this 2016 they would be launching one in India so you can see there are so many regions available and that gives you an advantage so across the globe whichever part you are you can select if you are launching for your customer or for yourself whichever is the nearest region you can launch an application from them yeah one thing you need to know is Amazon charges separately for each region so if you are doing something for the North Virginia that might be charging differently that what is being charged in the Sydney region or that might be different in the Tokyo or Beijing region so this is the cost part of the Amazon you need to understand and which when we progress we would be talking about more and more but here what is more important is to see the global footprint of Amazon spread you can see that it's spread across the globe and whenever your customer is you are going to get the best output from that now we were talking about the regions and zones so each region would have one or more availability zones and you can always plan your applications to span across multiple availability zones in the same region even if you want to achieve the real disaster recovery you can plan that your application can be spanned across multiple regions or a backup is always available in a separate region so for example suppose you have a use US East region where your applications are running you have launched three virtual server each in zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 of US East region why don't you plan a backup in the Europe region so keep a machine running over there or ready to be launched whenever required so if something goes wrong in worst condition which is unlikely but still something goes wrong you would always have the another region to fall back to and you can start your services from there immediately and that's why Amazon is ideally suited for high availability and disaster recovery cases since last almost five years I have not seen any bigger outage yeah there was a one almost five years back but since then Amazon is doing a phenomenally great service which is being always followed by the person that it is setting up its own benchmarks in the high availability disaster recovery and the SLS cases when you think about the Amazon cloud again people would say what are the characteristics it's highly available and highly reliable and we talk about that very recently you can achieve with the it's a global footprint you can get the high availability it's a very reliable also and I spoke just like a, again a few minutes back I have not seen an outage since five years it's, it's doing a wonderful job continuously managing all its services and there is no doubt with this massively infrastructure availability it's highly scalable and elastic by nature and that also gives you an advantage of the performance you can get the various kind of a performance what you need you would have a that kind of a service available you would have a that kind of a performance so you need a 2 GB RAM machine you need 4 GB RAM machine you need 60 GB RAM machine or you need 244 GB RAM machine there is something possible for you and that also makes it very flexible you it is a varying options available it's a agile by nature and in this when you see even if you want to access the Amazon there are various ways to access the Amazon you can access through the using the API's you can access through the programming way and various ways you can access the Amazon also it's a secure by nature it provides a multiple ways to secure your environment <sighs> what is this it's a flooded site and believe me that's what the case is Amazon is like an ocean it offers various services and that's why it, it's a keep on coming the things here you would see more and more services coming in the different categories very soon let's try to understand and let's have a quick overview about each and every service so here I'm going to talk about about each and every service or what is the use case of that service very briefly 
we might cover quite a few of these services in this curriculum which are very important for you again I don't say that the very important means the other services are not important but when you're preparing for solution service architect or when you're preparing for hosting deploying this is a very good case or use case for you those service we are focusing in this curriculum let's start with the compute and networking on the leftmost side EC2 or which stands for elastic compute cloud is the virtual servers in the cloud you can get the virtual servers on demand which are elastic you can host your applications or website anything over there virtual private cloud is your own private subnet you can make your own virtual secure network or your own virtual data center in the cloud with the VPC it's very important for the security purpose elastic load balancer is a load distribution service or load balancing service from Amazon which would distribute load among multiple EC2 instances when you have a huge load coming why don't you distribute among multiple servers to get the real scalability aspect Amazon auto scaling is a service which allows you to scale up and scale down automatically whenever the need arises it would be able to scale up based on the conditions you have defined and the same time whenever the need decreases it would automatically scale down based on the conditions defined over there Amazon route 53 is a scalable domain name system it allows you to map your domain name with the IP address you can think of it's a phone book like a phone book mo a mobile as a phone book similar this is the phone book of the internet where a particular IP maps to particular domain so if I have an IP called 1.2.3.4 and that maps to intellipart.com how does that map that is configured at the route 53 level if you want to procure your own domain you can also get from the route 53 Amazon Elastic Map Reduce is a managed Hadoop framework which gives you the Hadoop implementation, a managed Hadoop implementation from Amazon. Direct Connect is a dedicated network connection between Amazon and your data center. In some cases, organization needs a much faster connect between their organization and Amazon because their whole infrastructure is on Amazon. Amazon gives the direct connect options even in India it is tied up with a couple of providers like Bharti, Airtel and a few more which would give you a direct connection between Amazon data center and your data center Amazon container service is a op offering from Amazon to run and manage a docker container it's a managed docker offering from the Amazon <laughs> Amazon Lambda which is supposed to be one of the game changer in the near future is a service which says that you run application without server because it works in response to the events if there is some event has happened for example you have uploaded an image and you want to make a thumbnail out of that use the AWS Lambda for that it would be running some kind of a code you can run the code over there in the different programming languages in response to the event generated we go in the right hand side the storage and the content delivery Amazon S3 or Amazon Simple Storage Service is a scalable storage. It's a storage for the internet. When you want to store static content like videos, images, HTML, CSS, something like that, you can store it using Amazon S3. Amazon Elastic Block Storage is a network attached block devices. This is for the persistent storage. When you want to make a file system, EBS is the case for you it's a SAN implementation storage area network if you know about Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network if you know Akamai this is the almost similar kind of a offering Amazon does the offering of the CloudFront front or the content distribution with the help of the 54 plus age locations it is having across the globe Amazon Glacier is a archival services when you have a huge data and you want to save some cost by archiving them for infrequently access data if you want to archive Amazon Glacier is a service for you Amazon storage gateway 
is a service which helps you to integrate on-premise data with the cloud storage. Amazon import export is a service which allows to migrate large amount of and large I would say in a petabytes or hundreds of the terabytes of data when you want to do that kind of a data migration it's not like you want to do over internet rather Amazon gives a service called import export and along in the import export line Amazon has launched import export snowball which is a fantastic hardware given by Amazon which would help you to migrate the terabytes of the data very easily to Amazon. Amazon Elastic File System which is still in a beta but it's a managed file system from Amazon. It's like your NAS storage, NAS NAS storage. We move one more level right that is a database. Amazon DynamoDB is a NoSQL offering from the Amazon. If you know the NoSQL it means not only SQL and that gives you predictable and scalable NoSQL offering. Amazon Elastic Cache gives you in-memory caching services. When you want to, it's a Redis and the Memcache implementation which is a managed caching service from Amazon. Amazon RDS is a managed relational database from the Amazon. Amazon Redshift is a managed petabyte of the data warehouse service from the Amazon. When you want to do the data warehousing, Amazon with that. Yeah, to add to the RDS part, the managed relation database supports the most popular database across the globe. That includes the MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, MSSQL, MariaDB, and it also supports Amazon's own offering called Aurora, which is the highly scalable database from Amazon. Amazon also gives you data migration services where you can migrate your data with the minimal downtime. Coming to the leftmost bottom part, the mobile services and enterprises. Amazon Cognito is a user identity and data synchronization services where you want to allow the users from your mobile application, they want to access certain Amazon services using either Facebook or Google or Amazon or SAML based authentications. SAML, SAML based authentication, Cognito is a offering for you. If you want to do certain analytics like what the user is doing in your mobile app, you want to capture that, Amazon provides the service called Amazon Mobile Analytics. Amazon WorkDocs is an enterprise storage and sharing services. Amazon Workspace is a desktop class computing service. It's a virtual desktop on demand from Amazon. Amazon Device Farm is a farm for the physical devices. Rather, Amazon is having a mobile devices. When you want to test your mobile applications, you can use the Amazon Device Farm to test your applications. In the cross-service area, when you go to support, Amazon provides you various kind of supports including free to the paid to the fastest response 24 by 7 some are paid, some are fee. With the rise of the Amazon, one thing which has risen is the Amazon's ecosystem. And that has also given the birth to the marketplace. If you see, you have a App Stores, Play Stores, similar way, there is a marketplace for the AWS where people can build their own custom applications and give it for you on a pay-as-you-go model. So if you want to use the SAP HANA, or you want to use the Microsoft SharePoint. It's readily available with the click of few buttons, it's ready, you can start using that. And in quite a few cases, you would be paying the license of that software also on a pay-as-you-go model. Amazon also gives you management console, where you can manage everything from the consoles. Or even if you want to access the Amazon, you can using access using the software development kit or the integration development kits or using command lines you can do work with the Amazon using those tools also. Going to the app services part, the cloud search, that's a managed search service from Amazon. If you think of solar, the cloud search is a solar implementation from Amazon. It's a managed search service. Elastic transcoder, when you want to convert a certain media from one format to another, Elastic transcoder is a service for that. If you want to send the bulk emails in thousands of that, I am talking about bulk, not the junk. Amazon simple email service is for that. 
simple notification service is when you want to send the notification to the user whether it's an email notification it's a push notification over mobile it's a kind of a SMS if you want to send certain kind of a notifications SNS is a service for that Amazon simple queue service is a message queue service for you which allows to queue the messages this is if you see active MQ and rabbit MQ this is a kind of a service and which is very helpful when you are designing a loosely coupled architect SQS is a service for you Amazon API gateway is a gateway service a managed gateway from you when you are dealing with the microservice architecture working with the web services it's required sometimes you would have a gateway in front which would be the front facing and then distributing applications or the calls across the globe that's how the API gateway would be helpful Amazon simple workflow service is a workflow service for coordinating application components when the various components wants to talk each other they want to do certain kind of a workflow simple workflow service is for that moving to the rightmost part that's the deployment management and analytics Amazon cloud formation gives you template based Amazon resource creation service <laughs> you want to the manage things you want to manage resources faster way you want to deploy the resources faster way Amazon cloud formation is a answer for you if you want to monitor resources Amazon cloud watch is for that it monitors most of the Amazon services in top of that it also helps you to monitor the billing of your Amazon usage Amazon data pipeline is an orchestration for the data driven workflows when you want to the drive the workflows within using SWF and other ways the data pipeline would be helpful elastic beanstalk is Amazon's own pass offering we all know PAAS platform as a service model elastic beanstalk is Amazon's own pass offering if you want to manage hundreds and thousands of users you want to give them the secure access to Amazon services Amazon IAM is for that Amazon Upswork is Amazon's own DevOps offering. How do you manage the DevOps? That's what you would be managing here. Amazon Cloud HSM is a cloud hardware security model, which is a key generation tool for the hardware based key storage for compliance requirements. Amazon Kinesis gives you the real time processing of the streaming data. When you have a live data coming and you want to process stream them, that is what the Kinesis would be useful for you. Amazon Cloud Trail is for the API monitoring call. When you want to do what kind of API calls happening at the Amazon level, you can use the AWS API with the calls with the Cloud Trail. Amazon AppStream is used for the streaming of the games. When you want to connect your on premise with the cloud or when you want to have a directory implementation in the cloud, Amazon has an offering called AWS Directory Service. If you want to manage the deployment automatically, where automatically where it would pull the code, deploy, restart, whatever it require to do, AWS Code Deploy is a tool for you. When you want to manage your inventory, so it's like a Git kind of a tab, setup you want to do Amazon config is a service for you and when you want to create your own encryption things AWS key management service is a offering for you so this gives you a very brief idea about the various services offered by Amazon and as I tell you this would keep increasing Amazon keep adding more and more services for a reference and how you can work with that let's understand about the some security and how the security is managed at the broad level security is managed at the Amazon thing Amazon you see at the bottom would be physical interfaces these are the servers firmware hardware for the Amazon which is part of the data center right? each data center would have hundreds and thousands of servers that is what the physical interface also each server would be or the networking would be with the firewall that's the Amazon's own firewall which would be blocking certain kind of a traffic based on the rules defined because if Amazon knows there are certain IPs which are running DDoS attacks hackers something and based on the patterns it would be able to filter out that it's a simple rule like 
your mail service sends some mails to junk automatically same way the firewall would be blocking certain things for you on top of that if you see there is a virtual interface and the hypervisor if you know what is hypervisor hypervisor is a tool which helps you to virtualize the environment the VMware has that the Microsoft has that Hyper-V and even if you think Amazon uses Zen open source hypervisor to virtualize the environment Zen open source now when you have that hypervisors it would be creating the virtual interfaces and in result that would be coming to the virtual machines so your machines like the EC2 machines all that would be launching with that whatever the virtual servers you are creating that would be the help of the hypervisor it would be launching various servers now this is a multi-tenant environment so each tenant can have a multiple servers running so if I am having a few servers running that's the customer one or you are having your own servers that is your customer two or even for me multiple servers when you think I would have instance one instance two also here each machine or each virtual server or instance would have its own virtual firewall that is known as a security group a security group works as a virtual firewall for each instance and the advantage is it would not allow to go any traffic unless the rules are clearly specified in security groups if we try to see the simulate the case what happens somebody when types that okay abc.xyz.com just an example and that maps to the some IP of the Amazon the request would first come to the firewall firewall then filter out the things and then using virtual interface it would be redirecting your request to the instance one to whatever instance it is there each request coming over there each rather each instance would have a, a virtual MAC address created so whenever the request comes to that and the request comes back a MAC address would be part of the response so henceforth any request coming from that IP or source it might have the for the same IP address targeted it would have that virtual MAC part of this and the advantage is it would be redirected easily to the same instance but before that request reaches to the instance 1 or instance 2 whatever it has to pass through the security groups if you have not opened the port 80 or 8080 or 999 or whatever port you are working with the request would not be allowed to pass from that and it would not reach to the instance the security group also works as an added advantage for you or a firewall that gives you a very good security setting or implementation for your servers and that's why if I show you how does the security groups work for you suppose there is a three tier application where you have web servers, app servers and the database servers you have open port 80 and 443 that is for the HTTP and HTTPS ports for your web servers those ports you have opened in the security group of the web servers so the web server would have a security group attached which has port 80 and 443 open now you can also have a security group at the app server level but here you open the port 80 and 443 only for the web server for the web server means IP of the web server only you open the port so anybody trying to hit the app server directly from the internet using port 80 and 443 that request would be rejected because app server has opened the port 80 and 443 only for the specific IP of the web server yes in some cases you want to do SSH or connect over there in a secure way then you can open port 22 for specific IP address that could be your corporate office or network range that you can do that otherwise don't open for everyone so imagine if even if I know the IP address of my app server I cannot hit that directly on top of this you have a database server database server would have its own security group then what you can do is you open ports only for the database app server in the database server security group so even 
web server wants to talk to database server directly it is not allowed to the database server accepts the request only from the app servers this way it's a much secure environment so even if somebody wants to connect to your database they cannot directly so this is how the security group would play a key role for you when we talk about the amazon ec2 we would show you how do you implement the security groups and configure the rules also when we go for the amazon security it's a very important for you to understand that amazon sh says it's a shared responsibility model and why do they say shared because amazon says i am an iws i gives you all the services i gives you all the facilities to secure the environment but if you cannot secure it if you fail to do that and you open the security loop marks then it's your fault then i am not responsible i have given you mechanism it's your day or it's your turn to implement that so that's why amazon says it's a shared responsibility model so when there's a shared responsibility any customer data wherever it is stored in database or static content storage or some persistent storage that is customer's responsibility to secure amazon says i can give you i can give you encryption mechanism i can give you http secure tunnel over there i can help you to create a private subnet where nobody can access that but you have to implement that so how do you implement and that's why you can have the platform or application level security you can use the identity and access management where you create the users and give them the restrictive access instead of opening for the whole world use your firewall networking very effectively the firewall means the virtual firewall we talk about the security groups use that use client side data encryption server side data encryption network traffic protections whatever way possible amazon gives you that but it's your responsibility to implement that amazon says at the same time i take care of my infrastructure i'll ensure the security of my regions of every zones because i don't give anyone physical access to that unless they have special permission no customer can walk into my data center because they would never know where is my data center at all even if my employees only a selected employees has the access to this data center so my networking my database everything i am managing i am responsible for securing this but on top of this what a service i am offering it's a shared responsibility model you are also responsible as much as i am amazon also has a various certification accreditations also so whatever the industry standard required like soc 1 soc 2 soc 3 or hipaa or iso 27001 and the fisma and many more amazon is compliant for that it also on top of that offers a multiple ways it offers you identity and access management it offers you the hardware security models it offers you the government cloud now government cloud is for the us fed agencies which are working for the federal government so for them they have a separate cloud and only with the specific permission you can access that cloud the as aws government cloud is nothing but a separate region so out of the 11 region we talk about today this is the same thing where aws government cloud is one region which is accessible to only people who are working or who are the agencies which are working with the us federal government so there are various ways to achieve your security to enhance the security but do remember it's a shared responsibility amazon has also written a very wonderful white paper on security you can read from the bottom url awsamazon.com/security which gives you an overview about the what are the security implementation at the amazon level amazon also has given a very good now suppose you want to promote you want to talk about amazon you love the amazon but your organization says why should i select amazon so these are the simple cases given by that oh these are the usps of amazon 
why don't you see that it is having the global infrastructure mass presence we saw the regions and availability zones massively scalable compute and storage powers it gives you content distributions it is having its own managed databases it's very easy to deploy and manage it works with the big data implementations it has the having a ecosystem of other products software solutions everything it is having its own flexible support models and the most innovative features in the cloud keeps on adding new services keeps on adding new offerings and keeps adding the enhancing the features and that's why it's one of the most innovative in the cloud and ahead of its competitors by margins and margins over there and that's what the shows why amazon is the leader that this innovativeness always keeps it at the top of the cloud part this is the gartner chart which says where is the each cloud offerings and amazon is leader since last 5 years so people are moving to the visionaries and somewhere but they have not crossed the amazon now how do you access the amazon so you can access amazon using the amazon management console which we are going to see the very soon you can also use the amazon web services apis so it gives you the rest and so protocols rest apis you can access using that also so if you want to do some kind of a programming you can do that even it gives you the sdks to manage that you want the command line interface it is also offering that possible how do you start with the amazon the first and foremost thing is go to amazon.com and register with that while registering with that it would ask your payment information a credit card information which is a must case here now why must because amazon says i am a pay as you go model so if you are using certain services i am going to charge you for that so that is the reason i need your credit card information which would be charging you at the end of the every year based on your usage now in this curriculum what we are going to learn is would be completely free of the cost how amazon gives a certain free usage tier which we are going to learn and see how we can use that free usage tier to ensure that it does not cost you at all while you are doing any practice with the amazon if you follow the instruction well i'm sure it would not be costing you at all so let's try to see the amazon console let's try to register with the amazon and see what is the part of that so i'm going to open my browser now i am on the url aws.amazon.com i am here you can click on sign in to console this is my login id and password i can log in with that if you are a new user you can say i am a new user i will show you here quickly i click on the sign in to console and here i say i am a new user where you can give your id abc@email.com just uh, some dummy id i am giving no there is an account with the abc at email surprising there are so many accounts exist with that amazing world of the amazon okay great so finally i can give the details here and i can say create account
So it would ask, is it your company account or it's a personal account? You can give the country. This is all the dummy information I am filling out right now because we are doing just it for learning purpose. So here it would be asking you your credit card information, you have to provide that. This is the free usage given by Amazon which we would be talking about soon. And if you have a pen information you would be filling out this. So this is how you would be registering with the Amazon. You would once you provide that it would be verifying this, your details. And then if you are want to select any support plan you would be doing this. So this is how you would be able to register with the Amazon. Now once you register with the Amazon you can easily sign in with that. So I'm just logging to the Amazon. So here it says how do you start with Amazon, what are the Amazon services. This is the Amazon dashboard given by Amazon. What do you want to select? Now we talk about the regions. If you go here and click on Oregon, you would see all the regions offered by Amazon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 public regions for you. Out of 10, the 11, we talk about the 12 regions. The 11th region is AWS Government Cloud, which we talk about, which is available to only federal agencies of the USA. And the 12th one is the China region which is available to only citizen of the Republic of China. Otherwise these 10 regions are available to everyone. So based on a requirement whether you want to use the Singapore if it's near to you or US East you can select any of the region. Right if you click on here this is the same dashboard and you would be seeing what are the various services offered by Amazon. So you can see this is the different service we recently viewed. This is the Amazon Compute Storage. What are the various services you can check for that. If you want to check quickly when you click on the services you would be able to see each and every service here. So these are all AWS services available for you. So you can see about the console you can play with that I recommend do not use the console as of now do not use that rather register with that but do not use any other service as of now the reason is we are going to learn each and every services and then we would show you how do you use that services effectively and free of the cost because it may happen you start using some service now which might cost you. So this is the overview about the Amazon console and the account overview for that. So in this session we learn about what is Amazon and the, it's a different use cases. We saw that it's a global infrastructure. How do you achieve the security with the Amazon? How do you sign up with the Amazon? And we also check the Amazon console. I hope you all enjoyed the sessions. If you have any questions or doubt, you can always drop an email to us. Thank you.